I never ever get tired of seeing images that humans have taken of other worlds, other planets orbiting distant stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. This is really difficult to do though, just because the star is so bright and then the planet, which is reflecting the starlight, is so dim in comparison. Like the contrast between them is huge. We actually have to fully block the light from the star by putting a mask over the center of the telescope, which is called a coronagraph. And JWST has one of these coronagraphs. And this month we saw the latest direct image taken this time of the planet Epsilon Indy AB, which was published in this research paper by Matthews and collaborators. Now this image was a big deal for a few reasons. First of all, it's what's known as a discovery image. So this planet Epsilon Indy AB was actually discovered in this image itself. Second of all, it's the coldest and oldest exoplanet that we've ever been able to take a direct image of. And it's also the closest known exoplanet to Earth that is bigger than Jupiter, around about 12 light years away. So exciting for a number of reasons. And in this video, we're gonna dive into the hows and the whys and the what we can learn from it. Now this discovery of Epsilon Indy AB might have been one that you missed because it wasn't really picked up by mainstream media after it was published in the journal Nature. Now this is similar to another study that you might have missed, especially if you rely on UK sources for your news, which calculated the chance that the Milky Way would collide with Andromeda in the next few billion years and found only a 50% chance that it would happen. Thankfully with ground news, I can see that this research was picked up by 27 different sources around the world. And what I love about ground news is that with a simple scroll, it's so easy to compare the language that's being used to report on this study's findings across the political spectrum. So you can see that right-wing and center-leaning publications in this case tend to be using more alarmist language with statements like catastrophic collision, demise of our galaxy, and urgent warning issued. Whereas left-leaning sources tend to focus on the fact that we don't know whether the collision will actually happen or not, quoting those 50-50 odds and saying that it's far from inevitable. Their app and website was founded by a former aerospace engineer who worked on missions for NASA. So you can tell right away that their space and science coverage is excellent. So I'm really pleased that Ground News continues to be a longtime supporter of me and my channel, especially when you consider that they are completely subscriber funded, which allows them to stay free of any potential biases that come with paid advertising online. So head to ground.news slash Dr. Becky or scan the QR code on the screen to get 40% off their top tier unlimited access vantage plan to stay informed. So thanks again to Ground News for sponsoring this video. And now let's chat about this unexpected discovery of this planet six times more massive than Jupiter that's now been dubbed Epsilon Indy AB. Because although we suspected that there was a planet in orbit around this star, Epsilon Indy A, we thought it had completely different properties. So it was back in 2019 that Feng and collaborators reported on the possibility of an exoplanet around this star. And they found that Epsilon Indy A wobbled around on the sky. Now I know that when we think about planets' orbits, we think about them as, you know, orbiting static stars, but that's not really the case. The star pulls on the planet due to gravity, but the planet also pulls on the star, albeit a lot less. And so the two orbit a point between each other, like friends holding hands and spinning around. Now the bigger the planet, the bigger the effect it has. So Earth doesn't pull on the sun too much and doesn't really move it that much from that sort of center position that it would have orbited around anyway. But due Jupiter pulls on the sun a lot more, so much so that the point that Jupiter and the sun orbit each other is actually outside of the surface of the sun. So if you were to watch the sun from afar, you'd see it wobbling around. This is what Feng and collaborators spotted for Epsilon Indy A. It traced a circle out on the sky and they were also able to spot how its velocity towards and away from us changed during that orbit too. Now from those observations, you can then model it to work out, okay, what What's the best fit scenario of a planet orbiting a star that would explain these observations? And so they found that the best explanation was that there was a planet three times the mass of Jupiter in orbit around this star, taking 45 years to make one full orbit. That made it the closest exoplanet to Earth that was above the mass of Jupiter, which is why Matthews and collaborators applied to use JWST to try and take a direct image of this suspected exoplanet. And when they finally got their hands on the data, there was something unexpected there. This is the image you've got and you can very clearly see a detection of a planet there, but it was on the opposite side of the star to what was expected from all the previous data we had and orbiting further out from its star as well. 
Now, when you see something like this in an image, first of all, you've got to confirm that it is actually, you know, a planet in orbit around its star rather than another object in the background or in the foreground that's sort of like photobombing your image. Matthews and collaborators did that. They confirmed that that was not what was going on. Plus, they actually managed to spot it in previous images taken with the Very Large Telescope in Chile, where people were trying to take a direct image of the planet and looking for this slightly smaller planet that was orbiting further in but didn't spot anything, but perhaps missed this bigger planet further out in this much noisier data. So Matthews and collaborators are pretty sure that what they took an image of is a planet in orbit around its star, that they've actually seen the movement of along its orbit between the VLT image and the JWST image. And not only that, but from the JWST data, they're pretty sure that this is the only sort of Jupiter-sized planet in orbit around its star. Because if there was a planet that was around about three times the mass of the Jupiter and orbiting much closer in, we should have seen it in this image, but we didn't. Now, as I said, though, it is very difficult to do this direct detection of exoplanets and it does get easier the bigger the planet you have because the more light it will reflect from its star making it easier to spot but they're pretty sure given the detection limits in the image that there isn't another Jupiter-sized planet in orbit. And this is why so far all the exoplanets we've actually been able to take a direct image of have been over the mass of Jupiter. At the minute we can't do this for planets that are any smaller. Having said that, the plan for NASA's Habitable World Observatory is to be able to take a direct image of Earth-like planets once it launches in the 2040s. Now, I've made a whole video on that before if you want to check it out. It also has an interview with the head of astrophysics at NASA, Mark Clampin, whose job is to plan for that project now, including doing the proof of concept that we can actually improve on that current contrast that we have with JWST, the contrast being like the difference between the star's brightness and the planet's brightness that you can see with a new coronagraph on board NASA's Roman Space Telescope, the proper successor to Hubble, which will launch in a few years. Again, I've made a video about that recently if you want to check that out. Now, the other thing that makes imaging an exoplanet much easier is if it's young because then it's still hot from its formation, meaning that it's glowing very brightly in the infrared, making it much easier to spot, especially with JWST that detects infrared light. So the majority of exoplanets that we've taken direct images of are all younger than around about 100 million years, which in planet and star ages means they're still babies. So what's especially exciting about this new discovery from Matthews and collaborators is that it's much older than all of the exoplanets that we've imaged before at around about the same age as the solar system. With the latest estimate for the age of the star, it's orbiting at 3.7 to 5.7 billion years old. For context, we think that the sun and the solar system, which formed at the same time as the sun, is 4.6 billion years old. And again, I've made a video before on how we actually know that if you want to check that out. Because it's older, it's had a lot of because it's older, it's had a lot of time to cool down since its formation, which is why it's also the coldest exoplanet that we have ever taken a direct image of. And from the amount of light that the planet is reflecting, we can actually work out a rough temperature of the top of the atmosphere, which Matthews and collaborators calculate as 275 Kelvin, or about two degrees Celsius. And although that makes it the coldest exoplanet ever imaged, for context, that is still a little bit warmer than Jupiter. Despite that, and despite the fact that it is six times more massive than Jupiter, it is still the most Jupiter-like exoplanet that we've ever taken a direct image of. So it's really exciting to think about, you know, like future observations that we might do, investigating its atmosphere that we also know will be very settled given the fact that it is a much older exoplanet as well. Think about like if you study the atmosphere of an exoplanet after it's just formed, it's very volatile, it's still sort of settling down after its formation. So it's a really exciting prospect that this discovery has been made, especially when you think about it, it's only 12 light years away, which will just make any follow-up observations that we want to do that much easier. So now we've confirmed that this planet actually exists. It's really exciting to think that us astronomers now have like a, a, a chance to explore the atmospheric composition of like a true solar system lookalike. So we can work out if the solar system is unique. And you know, that's why we're all here in the first place. I mean, we're alone in the universe because we're that unique. Or if the solar system is not unique at all. This is what Fengen collaborators spotted for Epsilon, Epsilon, making it the coldest exoplanet there's a plane going over. Just out on their little Friday morning little plane ride. So now that this exoplanet has been confirmed to exist, there's someone from back outside.
My belly is grumbling so much. I don't know if you actually heard that. Oh, that was an ice cream man. <laughs> you bring joy wherever you go, but not to people who film. <sighs> ah, rude. You know, when you study exoplanets that are much younger, they're very volatile still after the after they're blah blah. blah.